I should have known better. I really should have. But when Diana flashed that mischievous grin of hers, my fate was sealed. And now here I am, sitting on the edge of her bed, with a pink wig in her hands and a sinking feeling in my stomach. How did I even get here? Come on, Caleb, Diana said, her voice lilting with excitement. A deal is a deal. I squirmed. I thought we were just joking. She rolled her eyes dramatically. You lost fair and square, and you know it. My mind raced back to that fateful night. We'd been hanging out at her place, just like we had a thousand times before. It started out harmless enough, with pizza and a movie. Somehow, it turned into a bet over who could keep up with some ridiculous challenge on her gaming console. I can't even remember what game it was now. What I do remember is losing, spectacularly. Diana, are you sure about this? I mean, come on, isn't there anything else I can do to make this up to you? I was grasping at straws, and I knew it. Diana's eyes sparkled with amusement. Nope, I already let you off the hook last time. This time, we're doing it my way. She punctuated her sentence by dangling the pink wig in front of me. I let out a deep breath, trying to muster whatever was left of my dignity. Fine, I muttered. Just don't take any pictures, okay? Diana's laughter filled the room. Oh, don't worry, Candace. I'll make sure you look so good, you'll want a picture to remember it by. The name she'd chosen for me, Candace, made my cheeks flush. I felt like I was losing control of the situation, but as she moved closer with the wig, there was no turning back. She gently placed the wig on my head, and I was surprised at how soft it felt. The strands of pink hair cascaded down my shoulders, and I caught a glimpse of myself in the mirror across the room. It was bizarrely mesmerizing. See, Caleb, or should I say Candace? Diana's voice was teasing, but somehow kind. It's not that hard, is it? Besides, I'm going to make sure you look like the prettiest girl in the world. My stomach churned at her words. The idea of becoming Candace was almost surreal, like I was stepping into someone else's life for a while. But Diana was relentless. She opened her closet and started pulling out clothes, making quick work of choosing a few items. All right, let's get you out of those boring boy clothes, she commanded with the authority of someone who'd done this a million times. I hesitated for a moment, feeling my face flush as I stood up. There was something both thrilling and mortifying about it. You really want me to enjoy the full experience, don't you? I said, trying to inject a bit of humor into my voice. Diana's grin widened. Of course, Candace, you're a pretty girl, and what pretty girl doesn't wear a bra and panties? Her tone was so matter of fact that it was hard to argue. With that, she handed me a set of delicate pink lace panties and a matching bra. The fabric was soft and smooth, and as I slipped into them, it felt strange but oddly comfortable. I couldn't help but notice how different it felt compared to my usual clothes. It was like stepping into another world, one where everything was a little more delicate, a little more refined. Diana helped adjust the bra straps, and even though I tried to maintain some semblance of composure, I could feel my cheeks burning. I avoided looking at myself in the mirror, not quite ready to see the transformation. Don't be shy, Candace, Diana said, her voice full of encouragement. You're doing great. I took a deep breath and finally dared to glance at the mirror. The person staring back at me was almost unrecognizable. The pink wig framed my face, and the lacy undergarments clung to my body in a way that was both foreign and fascinating. I looked cute. That was the only word that came to mind, and it sent a mix of emotions swirling inside me. Diana wasn't done yet. She rummaged through her wardrobe and pulled out a floral sundress that was just a little too short for my comfort. This will look perfect on you, she said with an approving nod. I took the dress from her and slowly slipped it over my head, feeling the fabric glide over my skin. Diana zipped it up from the back, and I couldn't help but notice how well it fit. It was snug in all the right places, and when I twirled a little, 
just to see how it moved. It flared out with a playful bounce. There, now, for the finishing touches. Diana clapped her hands together, looking like an artist admiring her masterpiece. She guided me to her vanity and sat me down in front of a vast array of makeup. I stared at the assortment of brushes, palettes, and tubes, feeling completely out of my depth. Diana didn't give me a chance to protest. She started with foundation, smoothing it over my skin with expert precision. The brush tickled a little, but it wasn't unpleasant. Next came blush, eyeshadow, eyeliner, and mascara. She worked with the focus of a painter creating a portrait. Her brow furrowed slightly as she concentrated. As she applied each layer, I could feel the transformation deepening. It wasn't just the physical changes. I was beginning to feel like I was becoming someone else entirely. Finally, she applied a light pink lipstick that matched the wig perfectly. There, she said, stepping back to admire her work. Candace, you look absolutely stunning. I blinked at my reflection, barely recognizing the face staring back at me. My features were softer, more delicate. The makeup accentuated my eyes, making them seem larger and more expressive. The wig framed my face in a way that felt almost natural. It was as if Candace had always been there, just beneath the surface, waiting to be revealed. I swallowed hard, unsure of how to react. I, I can't believe it. Diana grinned, clearly pleased with herself. See, I told you it wouldn't be so bad. Now for the final touch. She reached into her jewelry box and pulled out a pair of dainty earrings. They were small silver hoops that glinted in the light. She carefully clipped them onto my ears, completing the look. There, now you're perfect. I stood up, feeling the dress swish around my legs, the weight of the earrings lightly tugging at my earlobes. I turned from side to side, examining myself in the mirror. I couldn't help but admit, Diana had done an incredible job. So, Candace, she said, breaking into my thoughts. Are you ready for the next part of our little deal? My heart skipped a beat. I had almost forgotten that there was more to this. Next part? I echoed, suddenly nervous. Diana's smile turned sly, a glint of mischief in her eyes. Oh, don't worry, you'll see. Just follow my lead. Before I could protest, she grabbed my hand and led me out of her room. As we walked down the hallway, the sound of my heels clicking against the floor sent a shiver down my spine. The entire experience felt like a strange dream, one I wasn't sure I wanted to wake up from. We reached the living room, and Diana turned to me with a conspiratorial wink. Wait here, I'll be right back. I nodded, too overwhelmed to argue, and watched as she disappeared into another room. The anticipation was almost unbearable. My mind raced with possibilities, each one more outlandish than the last. When Diana finally returned, she was holding a camera in one hand and a pair of shiny, knee-high boots in the other. I thought these would be the perfect finishing touch, she said holding up the boots. I stared at them, my heart pounding in my chest. Diana, I thought we agreed, no pictures. She shrugged nonchalantly. Oh, come on, Candace, just one or two for fun. Besides, you look too good not to capture this moment. I hesitated, but the look in her eyes was impossible to resist. With a resigned sigh, I sat down and let her help me into the boots. They fit like a glove, the glossy material hugging my legs and adding an extra layer of allure to the ensemble. Now, stand up and strike a pose, Diana instructed, raising the camera. I felt a surge of adrenaline as I stood up and tried to strike a confident pose. I wasn't sure what I was doing, but the look of approval on Diana's face told me I was doing something right. The camera clicked and a flash of light momentarily blinded me. Diana took a few more shots, each one accompanied by words of encouragement. Perfect, you're a natural, Candace. As the photo session continued, I found myself relaxing into the role. 
Each click of the camera became less intimidating and more empowering. I felt like I was stepping into a new persona, one that was bolder and more daring than Caleb ever was. Finally, after what felt like a hundred photos, Diana lowered the camera and smiled. All right, I think that's enough for now. You did amazing, Candace. I was about to say something when the sound of the front door opening made us both freeze. My heart leaped into my throat as I heard heavy footsteps approaching. Diana's eyes widened, and for a moment, we were both rooted to the spot, caught between panic and disbelief. Diana, I'm home! The deep, familiar voice of her dad echoed through the hallway. I felt a wave of dread wash over me. Of all the times for him to come home early, it had to be now, when I was dressed like this. My mind raced, searching for an escape route, but before I could react, Diana grabbed my hand and gave me a reassuring squeeze. Just play along, she whispered urgently. You'll be fine. I nodded, trying to steady my breathing as the door to the living room swung open. Diana's dad, Mr. Reynolds, stepped in with a smile on his face, greeting his daughter like it was just another day. His gaze shifted to me, and I forced myself to smile back, hoping the nervous tremor in my hands wasn't too noticeable. Hi, Dad, Diana said cheerfully, stepping forward to give him a hug. She turned to me, her smile never wavering. Dad, this is my friend Candace. She's visiting for the day. I held my breath as he looked me up and down, his brow furrowing slightly. Candace, huh? You look familiar, he said, his voice laced with curiosity. My heart pounded in my chest. Of course, he recognized me. I'd been over to Diana's house countless times. The idea of him figuring out who I really was sent a rush of adrenaline through me. But at the same time, there was a strange thrill to it all. I was dressed as Candace, and that was who he saw. Oh, um, I've probably seen you around town, I stammered, trying to keep my voice as calm as possible. Mr. Reynolds nodded slowly, still eyeing me with a puzzled expression. Maybe. Well, it's nice to meet you, Candace. He turned back to Diana, his tone lightening. You girls playing dress up or something? Diana laughed, a carefree sound that somehow eased some of my tension. Something like that, she said with a wink in my direction. I forced myself to smile, hoping it looked natural. Yeah, just having some fun. Well, you both look great, he said, the hint of a teasing grin on his lips. Don't get into too much trouble, all right? Diana assured him we wouldn't, and with that, he headed off to the kitchen, leaving us alone once more. As soon as he was out of earshot, I let out a breath I hadn't realized I was holding. Oh my God, Diana, I whispered, feeling a mix of relief and exhilaration. I can't believe that just happened. Diana giggled, her eyes sparkling with mischief. See, I told you it would be fun. You did great, Candace. I felt a strange thrill in my chest hearing her call me Candace, especially after that nerve-wracking encounter. It was like I was slipping further into this new identity, and despite my initial hesitation, I found myself embracing it. We retreated back to her room, and I could feel the excitement bubbling inside me. I can't believe your dad didn't recognize me, I said, still slightly amazed. Diana smiled, a knowing look in her eyes. He saw Candace, not Caleb. That's the magic of transformation. I laughed, feeling a rush of confidence. Yeah, I guess you're right. There was a brief pause as we both sat on her bed, and then Diana turned to me with a glint in her eye. So, Candace, she began slowly, how would you feel about going out for some fun? My heart skipped a beat. Out? Like, outside? Why not? She said, her voice brimming with excitement. You look amazing, and it would be a shame to let all this go to waste. Plus, I think it'll be a blast. The idea of going out in public as Candace sent a shiver down my spine. It was one thing to dress up in the safety of Diana's house, but the thought of walking around, interacting with strangers, people who would see me as a girl, 
It was both terrifying and thrilling at the same time. I looked at her, her enthusiasm infectious. Okay, I said, feeling a rush of adrenaline. Let's do it. Diana's face lit up. Perfect. Trust me, you're going to have so much fun. We grabbed our bags, and before I knew it, we were stepping out of the house and into the warm afternoon sun. The world seemed different somehow, brighter, more vibrant. I could feel the breeze against my legs, the skirt of my dress fluttering gently as we walked. It was an entirely new sensation, one that made me hyper-aware of every step, every movement. As we headed to the mall, I couldn't help but feel a strange mix of nerves and excitement. The click of my heels on the pavement was a constant reminder of the transformation I'd undergone, and with each passing moment, I felt myself slipping deeper into the role of Candace. So, Diana said as we approached the entrance, what do you think, having fun yet? I nodded, unable to suppress the smile that was spreading across my face. Yeah, I really am. We wandered through the mall, the bright lights and bustling crowds adding to the excitement. Diana led the way and I followed, still trying to get used to the sensation of walking in heels. It wasn't long before we reached our first destination, a lingerie store. Diana nudged me playfully as we walked in. Ready to do some shopping, Candace? I glanced around, taking in the rows of delicate bras, panties, and other undergarments. It was a little overwhelming, but at the same time, there was something liberating about it. I was just another girl out shopping, and no one here knew any different. Sure, I said my voice a little breathless. Diana led me to a rack of lacy bras and panties, her eyes sparkling with excitement. Okay, so you've got to try some of these on. And trust me, you're going to love pantyhose. They feel amazing. I picked up a pair of sheer pantyhose, the fabric almost weightless in my hands. I could already imagine the sensation of the silky material against my skin, and the thought sent a shiver of anticipation through me. We gathered a few items and headed to the fitting rooms. As I slipped into one of the stalls, I felt a thrill of excitement. Trying on lingerie in a store, this was a new level of the experience, one that felt both daring and exhilarating. I pulled on the pantyhose, the fabric gliding smoothly over my legs. It was a strange but incredibly comfortable sensation, and as I adjusted the waistband, I couldn't help but admire how they looked. Next, I tried on a matching bra and panty set, the soft lace hugging my body in a way that felt both snug and delicate. Candace, how's it going in there? Diana called from the stall next to mine. I smiled, feeling a surge of confidence. I think I'm getting the hang of this, I replied, stepping out to show her. Diana's eyes lit up as she saw me. Wow, Candace, you look amazing. I twirled in front of the mirror, admiring the way the lingerie fit. It was strange to see myself like this, but at the same time, there was something incredibly satisfying about it. I felt sexy, empowered even. The transformation was complete, and I was fully embracing it. After we finished shopping, Diana and I continued our stroll through the mall. I couldn't help but notice the way people glanced at me, their eyes lingering just a little longer than usual. It was a strange sensation, being noticed like that, but instead of feeling self-conscious, it made me feel good, confident even. As we passed by a clothing store, a boy around my age walked up to us, his eyes fixed on me. I felt my heart skip a beat, unsure of what to expect. Hey, he said, his voice a little shy. I just wanted to say you look really beautiful. I was completely taken aback. My mind raced, trying to figure out how to respond, but before I could say anything, Diana stepped in with a grin. Thank you, she said, her tone smooth and casual. You're sweet. The boy smiled, clearly pleased with himself, and after a few more moments of small talk, he waved goodbye and walked away. I watched him go still trying to process what had just happened. Did that really just happen? I asked, turning.
turning to Diana with wide eyes. She laughed, clearly amused by my reaction. Yup, welcome to the world of being a girl, Candace. You're going to get a lot of attention looking like that. I couldn't believe it. The idea that someone had found me attractive, even in this new persona, was both surreal and exhilarating. It was like I was seeing the world through a completely different lens, one that was full of possibilities I'd never considered before. As we continued walking, I couldn't help but notice the way people were looking at me. It was a mix of admiration and curiosity, and it made me feel incredibly sexy. I was Candace now, and for the first time, I was starting to understand what that meant. We stopped at a small cafe inside the mall, and as we sat down with our drinks, I couldn't help but smile. Diana, I never expected to have this much fun. She grinned, clearly pleased. I knew you'd love it. There's something about stepping into a new identity, even just for a little while, that's so freeing. I nodded, taking a sip of my iced coffee. Yeah, I get that now. It's like I'm seeing everything from a new perspective. We spent the next hour chatting and laughing, the conversation flowing easily as we talked about everything from clothes to makeup to life in general. It was easy to forget about everything else, to just live in the moment and enjoy the experience. But as the afternoon wore on, I couldn't shake the feeling that this was more than just a game. There was something about being Candace that felt right in a way I hadn't expected. It was as if this new persona had unlocked a part of me that had been hidden away, waiting to be discovered. Finally, as the sun began to set, we decided it was time to head back. The day had been a whirlwind of emotions, but as we walked back to Diana's house, I couldn't help but feel a sense of contentment. A huge thank you to our amazing Patreon supporters for exclusive 18 plus content that's too spicy for YouTube, early access to our videos, and a special shout out in our credits, join us on Patreon. Click the link in the description to sign up and unlock all the exciting extras. Hope you enjoyed this story, and if you're looking for a daily escape into the world of cross-dressing, subscribe now and enjoy new stories every single day.